I'm loading up the truck with all the tiling stuff and all the stuff we're gonna use to do this backer board. And I'm filling up a water jug with a garden hose out here. And um, I had the hose on, you know, with the little thing you click so that it doesn't turn off, you know, it stays on by itself. And that thing came out of the top of the jug, which is right at eye level. And I got sprayed in the face with the hose on full blast for about two seconds before I could get it out of my face. So that's how my day is starting here. I'm soaking wet, hadn't even made it to work yet. Uh, it's gonna be a good day. Awesome. Ski resort. It's another beautiful day and we're on the mountain. Wait, wait, what? It's not a beautiful day. It's pouring rain and we're gonna be putting down backer board for tile. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> We're on the mountain working. We're going to do a bunch of stuff to get ready for tile. This rain's making my beard frizz today. I thought it would have the opposite effect. Oh, I don't know. What do women <laughs> complain about? Are you having a bad beard day? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. <laughs> Man, you caught me during snack time here. Oh, sorry. I'm kind of busy right now. <laughs> Today we're gonna to be using Hardy Backer cement board that we're gonna be putting underneath our tile. We're gonna mud it down with thin set to the plywood subfloor and we're gonna use screws to screw it in place. You can get Hardy Backer in different thicknesses. Today we're using the quarter inch for putting on the floor. If you're gonna do a shower wall, you would use half inch because it's the same thickness as your drywall. But here we don't wanna build up too much thickness because it would be taller than our wood floor which meets in the doorway. Yo, bro, move your, move your sandwich. Oh, sorry, bud. What was the thing working on here? Jamie didn't say it, so I'll say it. Pro tip, always use some sort of backer board if you're gonna lay tile on a subfloor. If you stick the mortar on your tile straight to the subfloor, it'll come up eventually. And I've seen this happen a lot of times, and you don't wanna do that. The house, one of the houses I remodeled in town was like that. They had two layers of three-quarter plywood and then tile directly on that. It was all popping off. It came off really easy, lucky for me though. Yeah. Jay, get the cutters. We got special cutters for the Hardy Backer. What are they called? Uh, nippers, actually, is the technical name. I'm in love with these things. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Isn't that a song? And, okay, so it's DeWalt nippers in a Makita branded box, all right? Something. No big deal. And let's have a look at them. Okay. What they do is break the material by just kind of shearing it. They nibble through it. And the reason that's important is because the dust from this concrete material has silica particles in it. And if they get in your lungs, they can't get out and it can cause cancer in California. And so basically you don't want to cut this stuff with a grinder if you can help it is all I'm saying. There's a lot of ways you can do this, but. We're just gonna do that. This so cool. here's this blade after about one foot of cutting, it's shot. It's so. kind of like, you know, you save all these blades because you can't throw them away, but they're all dull. This is a perfect time just to use them, kill them, throw them away. Before we install this board, we're gonna pre-drill uh, all the corner screws and edge screws so that it doesn't tend to crack the edges of the backboard like it can sometimes if you just run them in there. Uh, good man. It's gonna take a check before we get mud all over the floor. tip for you when you're using a big powerful drill like this to mix mud that's really kind of thick and stiff the bucket can spin yeah and it will slap you in the shins until you're bleeding yeah so the tip is uh put your foot on the bucket there so it doesn't spin 
It is a good idea to test fit these ones that have cutouts in them before you put mud on it. You can imagine if you laid this down in a bed of mortar and then realized it didn't fit and you had to pull it up and it had it all over it and then you had to adjust your cuts. And I then, can imagine because I've done it. Yeah, so it is it is a good idea to test the fit. And actually he might even get this other piece test fitted then we'll yep. mud the floor. If it's possible, we like to offset the joints of the backer board and the plywood. If you line up the joints, there's more of a possibility it could crack your tile or crack your grout. At Can't, that say crack. Can't say crack. Can't say crack. Can't say crack. I want to point out something here. Where we're breaking the backer board is going to be directly under where the door is. This is swinging in this way. Probably said this in a lot of videos, but that's only about a half inch in on the framing so that it's centered under the door and then it transitions to hardwood under the center of the door, not way out here somewhere where you can see the tile from the hallway. In this door opening, the door is on the other side and it's swinging into this closet. So you can see we've got our little chalk line snapped a half inch in from the framing on the outside. Nice job, Jay. Thanks, Bob. You're a pro. Man, how do you get in this thing? <laughs> Holy crap. That's a truck. This That's is what you need. Yeah. I think you should buy it for me. Wow. Holy crap. Stay next to that thing. <laughs> you think she gets good gas mileage? I don't know how Nathan can even get up in that truck. Hey, Jason, can you get some tools out for me? <laughs> no. <laughs> Dude, look at the back. That's pretty even. Mine's close. Your little boy's truck? <laughs> Big boy truck. <laughs> yeah. How do you get in your truck? I gotta ask. Uh, it's a very technical technique. It's like run and dive kind yes. of thing? <laughs> yes, feet hanging out and pull yourself in. <laughs> He's got a winch inside of you. Yeah. Pulls in. Another thing we're getting into today is actually prepping for the wall tile in the showers. We're going to be using TrueGuard Vapor Shield. And thank you to TrueGuard, they sent us this product for us to try, just so everyone knows. And this is a vapor shield membrane for showers and bathtub surround, which is exactly what we're doing. True Guard is a polypropylene membrane, and you simply adhere it to the wall with modified or unmodified thin set. Yeah, five foot six inch. Sure. That'll get above the valve there. If you're interested in how we're doing this, we're first dampening the wall with a wet rag to keep the thin set from drying too quickly. Then we're applying thin set with a 3 16 by one quarter V-notch trowel. A 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel would also work as well. After that, the true guard is applied to the thin set, overlapping two inches, and then we simply trowel it to the wall, getting out any air bubbles or any wrinkles before we move on to the next piece. shower with the true guard water membrane waterproofing we learned a lot though in a very short period of time we did I'm using the recommended uh, trowel size here to th put the thin set on and the first ones I think I didn't quite put enough on and I didn't know that I didn't until after the sheet was installed and we had to kind of work a little bit hard to get it to stick into the mud as we went on I applied more and it actually stuck way easier yeah, like this last and piece is perfect it was way easier to get the air bubbles out and I actually had a little bit of thin set squeeze out the edge which told me I had it fully covered yeah. and I just scraped that off and I feel really confident that it's yeah. never coming off we the went wall. around these with the zip roller actually after the fact and did a little, you know, Press mechanical it pressing. It helped actually a lot. <laughs> and it did help. So um, that was fairly quick and uh, now it's waterproof. You do have to put another coat of, of um, thin set over top of this and we're gonna seal the bottom once that dries. But other than that, we're ready to stick tile. Let's do it. There are some parts we did not use. They have these pre-made circle cutouts here for penetrations. If you're worried about um, placement and getting your hole cut precisely, you can overcut your hole and then apply this and then cut it precisely once it's in place. Also, they have inside and outside corner pieces if you're going around like a 
cubby or like maybe a shower seat. Or up to the ceiling. Uh, or yeah, if you go all the way into the ceiling, which we did not, uh, they have some handy pre-made pieces for that. Another thing we got going on today is the septic system is going in. It's a five bedroom septic because the owner will probably finish the basement with some bedrooms someday. And they're using infiltrator panels, which is that type of dome system. And it's a huge tank. I think it's 1,200 gallons. Getting in a pretty good routine there, bud. Well, I got such a big tub, I figured I might as well finish it off. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to recognize you three weeks from now. Oh, this is no carbs. Okay. What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, healthy right here. <laughs> is that how you usually eat grapes? Mm. Here's the deal. It's lunchtime. We've got one bathroom complete. Walls and floors. Good job. There's one to go, but I gotta go to the dentist. Yeah, get my Gold teeth Boy cleaned. Already left. And Golden Boy already went to the dentist, a different dentist. <laughs> so you guys <laughs> are gonna get a phone call and then do the other shower. Thanks for building with me today. We'll see you at the dentist. <laughs>